from Hartford. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Billy Packer. Vern? We welcome you to this matchup, and Billy, UConn has won three in a row, but today they're going to be without their leading scorer, Rashad Anderson, who is hospitalized. Without question, this will hurt their team statistically, but Vern, how many times have we seen a, a team step up when they know a star player is going to be out for the short term? That's going to have to take place for Connecticut today. And they have, among others, Charlie Villanueva off his best game ever. Well, he is playing outstanding in the low box. He's a young man with a great deal of talent and can certainly step up and be very productive. Josh Boone, leading rebounder in the conference, a great shot blocker as well. And uh, probably more than anyone, Marcus Williams today on both ends of the floor will have to prove that he belongs in a top 10 ball club. Anderson, by the way, battling an infection. That's why he's hospitalized. Now for North Carolina, another trio upon whom they can rely. This team is very blessed with talent. Rashad McCants has played great basketball against Connecticut in two games that he's played against them so far. He'll have to come up big today. And here we see Sean Ney, who has just played outstanding basketball in great condition, runs the floor for a big man very well. And of course, Raymond Felton, the ACC's number one assist man, conditioned as well as anybody in the college game. Only the sixth time these two teams have played, North Carolina has won four. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Russell Stover Candies. Show your love with a box of Russell Stover Chocolates. TD Waterhouse, the alternative to higher-priced brokers. And by... Zero to 60. How fast? Roy Williams in his second season as the North Carolina head coach. And let's take a look as State Farm covers the court. Starting five for the 19 and three Tar Heels. Jawad Williams, Sean May, Rashad McCants, Manuel, and Felton in the backcourt. And Jim Calhoun's 19th season as the Huskies head coach. His starting five. Charlie Villanueva, Boone, the freshman Rudy Gay, Denim Brown, and Marcus Williams in the backcourt. And again, Rashad Anderson, 14 points per game, is hospitalized here in Hartford while he continues to battle an infection in his right leg. Mike Getz, Carl Hess, Brian Kersey, the officiating crew, and Marcus Williams gives it to Denim Brown for UConn. Rudy Gay, he can hit that outside shot, but not this one. And here comes McCants for Carolina. He's got Sean May right side. Now May has for it in the low post. Finds the open man, and the shot is missed by Jawan Williams. Nice double down by Connecticut. Williams should have used the left hand there. Connecticut, a great shot blocking team, leads the nation in that regard. Anybody that gets it down low, burn against Connecticut, you've got to go ahead and finish strong. You know they've got shot blockers. 193. Here's a turnover. Dan Brown tossed it into the hands of Jackie Manuel. Manuel can ought to give that ball up. He's not the guy you want dribbling in the open court. Here's the guy you do want. Absolutely. Raymond Felton, nice dish inside. There's a double on May. He goes to his left and cans the first basket. May coming off one of the great individual performances this year against uh, Duke the other night. He's played three games against Duke where he's been sensational. The last three times he's played them. Excellent low post score. 23 points, 18 rebounds in that one point defeat for North Carolina at Cameron Indoor. Here's the double team on Boone. Second, UConn Carroll. Felton has it, and he'll force it. Kicks it in the corner. McCants. Good decision not to take that shot. Open lane for Felton off the glass. North Carolina likes to get off the big starts. Connecticut needs to slow down, get the ball inside some. Play with a little bit more patience. That's a dangerous pass there. Sure was. Jawad Williams is out on Dylan Weaver. Now what he gets. Connecticut, an extremely young team. There's the ball denial by May. Chase down in the corner and timeout called. Uh, he was on the line during that. Uh, yes, he was. But now here, that's a that's a double hurt. North Carolina does not get, I believe, possession of the ball, but wastes the timeout. Let's see if they're going to. Well, they don't give him the timeout because the referee signaled he was out of bounds before he called it. 
That's a break for North Carolina. Sure is. First substitution getting ready to come in for North Carolina. Jackie Manuel, by the way, is battling an upset stomach. There's a jumper that's off the mark. Hilton Armstrong is in for UConn. This has been all Carolina in the early going. So far early in this game, North Carolina getting all the loose balls, which is not a good sign for Jim Calhoun with his young team playing at home. Jawad Williams, right side. Corner from Jawad Williams out there. May up to get the rebound, rejected. That's the second block in the game. That was Armstrong. Nice pass, beauty. And Rudy Gay finishes it off. Good job by Connecticut to push the ball up the floor. May is going to have to learn that you're not going to make any finesse shots down in low against these outstanding shot blockers for Connecticut. You've got to go up with power. Williams. Battle for the rebound. Denham Brown has it. And UConn with a chance to tie or take the lead. Marcus Williams. Goes right, looks for the screen from Villanueva. There's the switch underneath, and the shot is short. Got caught in no man's land. And here's Manuel again in the open floor with the dribble. Better give it up. Gets it to Feather. Now, Sean May a little winded as he comes across the court, but he's not winded, uh, so winded, he can't get the rebound, and this is the putback. Two easy shots for North Carolina. Felton realizing they've got shot blockers. He can't put it away. Offensive board, it's a medal of hustle. There's May, and he's fouled. Well, Roy Williams in his second season as the head coach two years ago. He was the head coach at Kansas. Bill Self was in Illinois. Matt Doherty resigned. Williams went to his alma mater. Self has done fairly well at KU, and uh, Bruce Weber has done even better as the new head coach at Illinois. Well, you stick Matt Doherty in that group, and everybody's playing with the other guy's players, but doing a great job with them, so you can't complain in any regard. Williams, of course, left great players at Kansas. Bill Self, likewise, at Illinois, and Doherty left a nice uh, group of kids at North Carolina for Roy Williams, the coach. One of whom is on the line. Now here are three substitutions for Carolina. You know, for an interesting connection, too, back in 91, North Carolina beat Connecticut in the ACC Big East Challenge. And that particular year, North Carolina went on to the NCAA Final Four. Who did they face? Kansas and Roy Williams. And that was the game in which Dean Smith was ejected. Roy Williams goes to the championship game and loses to Duke. So a lot of interconnections between these two schools, although they've only played five times. And this being the sixth. They played last year down in North Carolina. And uh, UConn went in as the number one team that week against the ninth seeded, ninth rated. North Carolina raising the chance of a three-pointer with six seconds to go to give uh, North Carolina a three-point win. This one's chased down by Gay. Marcus Williams picks it up. Melvin Scott is on now, along with Felton, David Noel, and Marvin Williams from North Carolina. Scott brings some good outside shooting to this team. Noel picks up the foul. And Armstrong will go to the line. A 6-2 North Carolina lead. First time they've ever played at the Hartford Civic Center. In 1998, North Carolina's Antoine Jameson was a unanimous choice for the Naismith Player of the Year Award. He led the Tar Heels with 22.2 points per game. Jameson is one of the best players in North Carolina history. Who is the other Naismith winner to play for North Carolina? Now play Naismith Trivia for a shot at a million dollars. Text play 226222 on your wireless phone. You'll get 20 questions for 20 chances to win a trip to the 2005 NCAA Men's Final Four and a shot at a million. North Carolina transition. You're going to see right down here in the corner what happens when McCants realizes that you got five guys on one side of the floor defensively, three of them with their heads turned, watch how Felton sees McCants in the corner. Nice screen, spot up jump shot. That's not the traditional fast break that you think of with a layup, but just as good, if not better, when you've got a wide open three by a guy that can hit him. North Carolina leading this uh, NCAA season in scoring with a 91 point per game average and Duke slowed it down on him with a half court set the other night. And we've got a 
Is that Jack? I think it's Manuel. He's, yeah. uh, he, uh, we were told that had some problems with his stomach in the uh, locker room last, or in the uh, hotel last night, and not feeling well at all. You can tell that. Well, he has a bucket right down between his legs, a nice pack on his neck. A lot of kids around the country and a lot of different college teams having problems. You know, Marcus Williams has suffered from a, a real flu situation here, so it's a tough shot. I tell you what I would do if I had a coach, though. Any guy that has a bucket between his legs, he's get him to the end of the game. You bet. What's he doing there, Roy Williams? Absolutely, and I don't want the starters to see him. No. Good tap in. 6-4, under 16 to go. Here's Noel, who is also battling flu-like symptoms. Melvin Scott, back to Noel, takes the jumper, gets it. Noel has had big games off the bench for North Carolina against Connecticut. Seven last year. Rudy Gay, Villanueva on the bench now. Hilton Armstrong's on. Here's Marcus Williams. Back to Armstrong, didn't know quite what to do with it. Williams takes the three and gets it. Nice shot by Williams, and that was a good decision by Armstrong, because when Williams went to the basket, he knew there was a man over there, but wasn't looking at faces, just looking at, at uh, uniforms. So Armstrong, instead of taking a bad shot, gave it up. North Carolina just two of 11. They've got a one-point lead. McCann points with an elbow, yep. Absolutely. Well, uh, UConn 15 and 5, 7 and 3 in conference. A huge victory last Monday night at Syracuse. You see their strength of schedule 27. He wins at Georgetown and at Syracuse. They did suffer a loss at UMass. Sean May is back already eight. with four points and five rebounds. Eight of UConn's last 10 opponents ranked teams. Boy, that's a tough, tough task. Here's Rudy Gay. Little jump in the lane, and he'll go to the free throw line. Looks like they got Felton. Marvin Williams into the ball game now has been outstanding off the bench. It was Noel instead of Felton. And that's his second. Villanueva getting ready to come back on. And Antonio Kellogg, who is the backup to Marcus Williams, also will make his first appearance in the game. Mentioned Marvin Williams, uh, 5 for 8, 12, and 5 rebounds against Duke at 25 minutes. He is now 11 of the last 12 games in double figures coming off the bench, playing a little over 22 minutes a game. Rashawn Terry, the sophomore from Winston-Salem, is in the ball game now. For Roy Williams going deep at the bench uh, early in this ball game. I think that's one of the reasons you like them as a potential national champion because of their depth. Well, one of the things, though, in that six-game run, you only need to be eight deep if you know all your guys are going to be healthy. John Wooden won 10 doing it that way. <laughs> well, I don't think you have to be that deep, but you got to have them all healthy. Here's me. Nice turnaround jumper. Taken about three steps further out than was expected. Boom didn't expect him to shoot that jump shot from there. Made with six points. And North Carolina up by one. There's Denim Brown. Denim Brown can go over Scott on the jump shot, the short jump shot. He ought to try to penetrate to the foul line and go above him. Antonio Kellogg gets a screen from Boone, frees him up for the jumper. Big minutes here if Kellogg can spell Williams. Now, he has been erratic this year. Here's May. That three-point effort goes over the backboard. UConn ball. You notice what happened to May on that shot? He was moving forward as he caught the ball. Never got himself in a good jump stop position. Ten years of domination under Jim Calhoun. Two national championships. They joined Duke and Kentucky as the only programs in college basketball who have won two since 1985 when the field was expanded to 64. Jim Calhoun initially said when he took the job, come to Connecticut to play against good players. Now he says, come to Connecticut to play with good players. And he lost it with great players. Here's Boone. And out of control. And the rebound, chased down by May, saves it. But there's Kellogg. Now Kellogg fights and travels. He has been erratic. Well, there he tries to do more than is necessary. You've got a ball game, Boone. 11 to 10, you're one up. Possessions are so important in a game like this. Just pull that back out. Don't try to make the big play. Clinton Thomas is also on the floor now for North Carolina. 
This is Marvin Williams, the freshman out of Bremerton, Washington, with an air ball. This is a strange lineup for this point in the game for Roy Williams to have on the floor. He's got Marvin Williams, Quentin Thomas, Melvin Scott, only one starter on the yeah. floor right now, May. Here's Rudy Gay, the freshman. Rebound in the hands of Melvin Scott. May right side. Gets it back outside. Here's Quentin Thomas, who's not a scorer. For Sean Curry, who is. Oh, how about that big shot? Not one that was expected by Connecticut, for sure. There's a push off by Bourne. He gets by with it. And he is fouled. He sure did. Well, Big East, ACC. Pick your conference. How do you well, like the way they match up? Well, so far, the Big East has won six of seven games against ACC. That would be surprising. I think the ACC, with those three teams, has got three teams that you would look at as eight, elite eight type. But I think that the Big East goes deeper with, with better teams than does the ACC. Right now, you'd have to say the Big East probably at least at seven teams in the NCAA. And all seven of those, in my estimation, have a chance to work their way maybe even to the Sweet 16. They won't. But uh, you can't tell me which one's not capable. Well, for the moment, I think you would uh, put Georgetown, Notre Villanova, Dame. yeah, Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Yep, those are clubs that um, can beat a lot of people. Here's Boone. Hilton Armstrong getting ready to check back in. Ed Nelson also on the floor, the uh, transfer from Georgia Tech. So both coaches deciding to go deep early. Now let's check the five on the floor. This is Quentin Thomas. Gerard Williams is back. He's got the ball in his hands now. Here's McCants back on the floor. A little give and go underneath. Nice defensive effort by Hilton Armstrong. And that will be UConn ball. Gerard Williams in the last three games, 0 for 2 against Florida State. 2 for 5 at only 6 points NC State. 1 for 6, 2 points against Duke. Now we're talking about a player in 19 games to start off the season was in double figures. So he is really falling off in his productivity. This is Ryan Thompson, who does not play a lot for this uh, UConn team, number 13. This gives to Nelson, who's played a lot against North Carolina, but he's at yes. the deck. And this is a foul on the lead on UConn. One point game as we uh, get close to the midway point of the first half. The last 12 seconds of the Duke game for North Carolina. Here you have May. May, who in that particular ball game had 23 points and 18 rebounds. Look at where he is. And look at McCants and J.J. Redick. Redick understands what play it is. It's the play that beat Connecticut. And watch what J.J. Redick does. He knows what McCants is coming back, so he waits for him. Eliminates the shot situation there. Belton gives the ball up because it wasn't what he anticipated. Duke comes away with a win. My question, Vern, is... Why would you try to set up McCants, who was one for eight from three, you're only one down. The play was for Felton to drive the ball to the basket and make something happen. And very obvious, very obvious that Duke had prepared for that end of game play. Absolutely. Redick talked about it. Smart kid understanding uh, what the opponent potentially could want to do. And there was the first time that Williams has gone up strong with the ball. That makes it a three-point game, and the allusion to the play that beat UConn, that was the play that uh, North Carolina ran, resulting in the McCants three-pointer last week, or last year, down in Chapel Hill at 86-83 victory. It was Williams. Uh, and Vern, the difference to me was, in that game, McCants were four, was four or five from three. He was working on a 27-point game, really hot in that ball game. In the game against Duke, he obviously had little confidence, so... I, I thought the ball was to keep it in in Felton's hands, make a drive. May was inside. Williams was inside. Two guys that could finish, make a play. You're only down one. You don't need a three. Marcus Williams, who uh, spent two years at Crenshaw in California, Crenshaw High School, and transferred to Oak Hill Academy. Well, when, when Jim Calhoun's team won the national championship last year, as soon as it was over, he called Williams and said, the ball is now in your hands. And this young man is starting to deliver. Twice this season, Marcus Williams has had 16 assists in games, most recently in a four-point loss out at Notre Dame. And has played some great defense against outstanding. 
outstanding players. McNamara did a great job on him. Chris Thomas as well. Now, he held Jerry McNamara last Monday night to four for 18. And uh, that one's out of bounds on UConn. He held Krauser to two for eight. So you're talking about three outstanding guards. And he's played very well defensively. He's doing a pretty good job on Felton so far. There's the quick hands of Kellogg. The outlet pass. Armstrong is knocked away by Manuel, who is back on the floor. So uh, Jackie Manuel found enough over there on the bench. To okay, Mr. Football, what was that, a free safety? What yeah. was Manuel the free safety? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Armstrong, the wide receiver. Here comes free safety Manuel. Look at him going over there. Not many free safeties, 6'7", are there? <laughs> no. Great agility on that one. Here's Dylan away for one of the few touches he's had. Back cut on the line. Great recognition that time by May from the weak side on defense, realizing that his teammates were beat on the backdoor cut, came over from the weak side to cause the turnover. Now Marvin Williams, 11 minutes per game off the bench. He's uh, the sixth man for Roy Williams out of Bremerton, Washington. Williams having a terrific first year. There's the empty pass. Contact. Partially deflected. Jumper Williams. Got it. Beautiful arc on the play. Felton right back, but so far Connecticut has done a great job stopping everything down in the paint. UConn by two. Final to go. go. McCann's going to try to break Kellogg down. Takes the jumper instead. He's off the iron. Boone with the rebound. And UConn not adverse to forcing the issue. McCann's just settling for jump shots, of which he is now made four of the last 23. He needs to break his man down and go on the dribble. Double team for us going away, but it'd be too hard for the shot. Here's Felton, spots up, jumper, too strong. Boom. Kellogg, right side, all alone. Balls on the floor, North Carolina. Here's McCants. Williams is back. Yeah. Walking, not called. Look at Jim Calhoun. Uh, there's no question. <laughs> Referee asked him, Jim, to get off the floor. He doesn't have on a striped shirt. No question, that was a walk. Nine to go, first half. Williams drills it back outside, and the chance got a hand on it. Neither team is going to get much from a penetrating guard all the way under that basket. Too many good shot blockers on both teams. There's a quick pass inside the boom. Muscles his way for two. Freshman, a little lesson right there. He said, Hey, you know, I used to practice against Okafor every day. You're not a problem for me. <laughs> Eight and a half to go, first half. Marvin Williams going away to guards him. McCants, Kellogg. See, there's what he ought to do. Put the ball on the floor, drive by. When you're not hitting the jump shot, there was the walk on that play, but McCants that time wisely put the ball on the floor. <laughs> He's a might have walked twice on that play. I think he walked all the way to stores. Boom, 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 boom. You know, it begs the question, how did you miss that? Well, <laughs> somehow they did. Noel back on the floor. He's playing the two fouls. Here's the chance. Denim Brown is in the block. Rudy Gay, who has a ton of talent, the 6'9 freshman. This team has led the nation in blocks for three straight years. That hasn't happened in the history of college basketball. They're also leading it this year. When you're inside, if you can't get it up quick, get it out. There's May, nowhere to go. Williams tracks it down. He's got Boone. He'll pull up and take the jumper off the glass. Good decision. And great concentration by Williams because Felton ran right behind him. Williams in double figures. He's got 10. And he's energized. Front edge. McCants with a miss. Here's Williams again. This is to McKay. Great job by Connecticut pushing the ball up the floor. 
Sometimes the teams that run doesn't like to be run against, and that's what's happening here. May, hard effort underneath. He'll go to the free throw line. That will momentarily quiet the crowd. A 13 to 2 Yukon run. Which you know you Step your game up. Go a couple minutes out there. Step your game up. Drop it to the floor and just step your game up. Step your game up. Hey! Step your game up. Field goal percentage edge to Yukon. Three point field goal percentage edge to Yukon. Well, North Carolina from the outside right now. McCants, Williams, and Felton are three for 14 with outside shots, one for six from three. One of the things that they have not adjusted to, and that is this great shot blocking ability of Connecticut. So far this year, they have 199 shot blocks. Four guys with 25 or more shot blocks. You are not going to get weak shots off inside in the paint. You know, Vern, we did the Notre Dame game. And what impressed me so much about Notre Dame is the fact that they controlled the paint. That really shows you how deep this Big East League is with guys that can go down inside in that box and play well. I remember how well Tarim Francis played in that game. Had an absolutely terrific afternoon, and Notre Dame held off UConn and won by four. Here's Sean May. He'll shoot one more. Six blocks thus far in this game. Well, they did lead... Uh, the NCAA in shot blocks the last three years. Open four, of course, was the key figure in that. That one's out of bounds. <laughs> and, and, uh, Jim Calhoun looks at George Blaney and just holds his hands open. That's the kind of mistake of first year. And I realize he's not a freshman, but he's a, this is a first year running the club. You don't need that pass, particularly with the score where it is right now. And Jim Calhoun and George Blaney in just a few years of coaching between them. 67. And uh, Calhoun's up. Here's Jawad Williams. Finally got one to fall. That's his second basket of the game. But first from outside. And we're talking about a guy who has been extremely hot in some games. Nice double. Boom. And May comes down with another rebound. That's seven rebounds already for Sean May. Williams in the low post this time. Spin, baseline, got it. Williams, 6'9", gifted ball player. He was part of that 8 and 20 team that suffered the only loss Carolina has ever suffered. A bruising beating when they played in stores two years ago. That was a huge 86-54 game. Oh, oh, how about that? Hilton Armstrong. Becoming more and more productive for this team. Felton. Jawad Williams left alone. Wow! Well, that's a confidence builder right there. How important is that? A guy's been struggling the last four games, makes one jumper, and then looks for the second one. Give him a lot of credit for keeping his confidence. Left hand. How about that? Change it in midair. Here comes North Carolina. Felton leaves it for Scott. Williams has hit his last two. Now, Boone is on him, so he's got to move way away from the basket. Armstrong clears the miss. UConn by one, five and a half to go first half. Boy, they're doing a good job on Boone down in that low post. Terrific help from by Scott from the weak side. Here we see Armstrong, beautiful move on the inside. He keeps improving each and every game. And really puts Connecticut in the situation to be four deep with big men on the inside. Boone asking to come out right now, raise that fist. Charlie Villanueva is back on, has not been a factor in the first half of this one. And Quentin Thomas knocks that one out of bounds. Villanueva with 21 points and 10 rebounds may have been his best game at UConn in that win the other night uh, up at Syracuse, but nothing today. Zero for one shooting the ball. There is Kellogg trying to run this team right now, and here if North Carolina is going to make a move, they ought to make it with Williams on that bench. Felton is out of the ball game, so you can't make it with your starter. Thomas is guarding Kellogg. There's Villanueva. Double team. Kicks it in the corner. Right. Brown, no. Villanueva fighting for the rebound. May gets it. Numbers. Three on one. Touch passes. Beautiful. Sure was. And that was Marvin Williams who made that last touch pass. He was a little bit too far from the basket to try to explode for the dunk. A wise move on his part to give it up. 
Robin Williams out on Villanueva now. Here's May. McCants guards him. Jim Calhoun can't go much longer without getting Williams back in the ball game to run this offense. Denham Brown out of Toronto. And Villanueva goes back, just does avoid the open back. You see, Kellogg's not handling the ball, so they really don't have anybody to get the offense started. Two times in a row, they've taken bad shots with the clock winding down. John May with his ninth rebound already. And just pulls his way to the basket. Offensive foul. That was a fault of the passer. Don't give it to a big man in trouble. Here's the passing on that fast break. One, cross court, two, three, four, layup. Beautifully executed, executed three on two break. Sean May gets a rest. Williams back in the game with Kellogg. So now two point guards on the floor for Connecticut. They ought to be much better shape getting into their offense. Kellogg gets it to Williams. Here's Boone. He's guarded by Marvin Williams. Nice spin move. Too strong. Josh Boone rebound. Foul. And I think they're going to get McCants. Yep. Williams being that left-hander loves to come back. One-point game. Now play Naismith Trivia for a shot at a million dollars. Text play to 26222 on your wireless phone. You'll get 20 questions for 20 chances to win a trip to the 2005 NCAA Men's Final Four and a shot at a million. Hartford Civic Center, Vern Lundquist, Billy Packer. Sixth meeting ever between Carolina and Yukon. North Carolina won four out of five. The only victory was at Gamble Pavilion of the campus of Yukon during that 8 and 20 North Carolina year. Turn right now, North Carolina leading Connecticut and rebounding 17 to 16. Connecticut number one in the country, North Carolina number seven. North Carolina in the tough ACC, particularly the teams up at the top. They are number one in offense, number one in margin of victory, number one in field goal percentage, number one in three percentage, number one in free throw percentage, number one in rebound margin, assists and steals. Can you imagine in a league that's that tight, having a team playing so well in so many different areas of the game? That's pretty impressive. I saw where Lute Olson made an interesting point the other day where he said that conference statistical leaders should only be counted in conference games, not in the, the games out of conference as well. I, I really think that that's true. Some teams may play a very rigorous outside schedule. Other teams don't. I think he makes a very good point there. Lou Nelson uh, chatting with Jim Calhoun earlier in the week and told Calhoun he likes his team this year, Arizona. Arizona and Washington, two teams that you can see in that Elite Eight coming out of the Pac-10, but I don't understand how they're the number two rated conference in the country. Doesn't make any sense to me. Here comes Williams after the miss. Marcus Williams in the corner, Gay. And Villanueva touches it last. No, it was touched last by Carolina. Thank you, Paul. Gay has just come up a little short on those jump shots. Two or three occasions getting some wide open looks because Williams doing an excellent job penetrating and kicking out. Here's Gay. Fade away. Off the front rim. The can't rebound. Good block out that time by Marvin Williams against Boone. Camps. Gay on him defensively. Marvin Williams will take that outside shot. Yes, he will. Marvin Williams has it now recruited out of Bremerton by Roy Williams when Roy Williams was still coaching at Kansas. So long cross-country journey by Marvin Williams to enroll in North Carolina. Camps normally posting up a guard, but now with Gay on him, he's trying to post up a bigger man and not getting by with it. Jim Calhoun said there was a kick. A little bit out of the coaching box. Uh, yeah, just almost up there to shake hands with Roy Williams. But he doesn't oh. get the call. Whatever happened to the coaching box concept? You know, I think the referees now say, as long as the guy's not abusing, let him go. Which I think is nice. Oh, it's funny. I, I just I flash back to the 1992 regionals in Philadelphia, the great Duke-Kentucky game. But in the semifinal, John Calipari gets called for being out of the coaching box from 80 feet away. Wow, big turnover. Kellogg not getting it done on the floor right now. No, no place to go on that drive. Good defensive move. 
Right here, you've got no place to go. Look at the heads down. He does not see what's going on around the court. Now, one of the things that a great guard has to do, he has to have eyes where he sees where the other players. He can actually count that none of the players in white shirts were ahead of him. So therefore, pull the ball back out. You've got no place to go. A good guard will be able to, with his eyes, see where all the players are on both his team and the opponents. Now, once he committed the foul, he knew where he was going. So he didn't hesitate to head to the bench. And Denham Brown is back on. Weak rebound by Marvin Williams. Three on two, ball. Denham Brown. Blocking foul called on North Carolina. Coming up on singular at the half, Greg Gumbel and Seth Davis will get you updated on the other action going on around the country. And Billy Packer and Seth will jump it up again in another edition of Jump Ball. It's all coming up on singular at the half. Denham Brown, this is his 67th start of his career. Began this season as a starter and went to the bench for five games and now has come back on. That's a reminder again that Rashad Anderson is hospitalized here in Hartford. Last Tuesday came down with an infection on the inner part of his uh, right leg. Isn't it interesting? Denham Brown, as a starter, is averaging 12 points a game. As a sub, seven points a game. Right. Some guys just come off the bench well. Some guys don't. And Rashad Anderson, over the course of his career, has six times gone 20 or more off the bench. So, more suited to that than Denham Brown seems to be. Up, right through the hands. Both teams having problems with freshman guards in the ball game. Well, when we left Phil Mickelson yesterday afternoon, he was up by nine, and Greg Owen eagled the 18th hole, so he's got a comfortable margin of seven. Final round coverage from Pebble Beach follows this one. You know, Billy, I don't miss many golf tournaments, but that's one I do, Pebble Beach. You you miss it, and you mean that you miss not being at right, as opposed to miss. You oh, miss yeah, it. that's it. Thank you. Right, I, I didn't want to catch Don't get me in trouble. Oh, absolutely. Not a man that's a <laughs> voice of the masters. I oh. hear that you miss golf. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, there's one. Denim Brown. Beautiful release on that jump shot. Manuel, he's not a shooter. Or a passer. And it's or picked up by man. Gay. Right. Rashawn Terry is back. Well, I'm not sure about that pass. It's saved, however. No. Nope. On the line. When players don't understand their roles, and Manuel, who's done a good job understanding his, there you see that great fadeaway jump shot by Brown. But Manuel's the kind of guy you don't want taking outside jumpers. You don't want him handling the ball or trying to make a play in the open court. Sean May back. Nine rebounds already. And Roy Williams is letting Manuel know that he's a defender. 65 seconds to go, first half. Jawad Williams, Marvin Williams, coached by Roy Williams. Oh, boy. Wow. Armstrong did a terrific job defensively, and May scored anyway. Put it off the window and got two. 42 seconds to go. Heads up for the reverse dribble here using that left hand. Let's see if Thomas understands where he's going. There's the hit by uh, Sean May. Entry pass. Bill in the way, though. Nope, not going for him today. Shot that he likes. Smart move by Roy Williams here to call the timeout. His player was in a little bit of trouble, but you got 23 seconds. See if he comes back in with Felton. That'd be a good move, and he does. So he comes back with two starters, McCants and Felton, for this last 23 seconds. Now let's take a look at today's Applebee's neighborhood favorite, Jim Calhoun. Had a little less weight back then. Coached at Northeastern for 14 seasons, two national titles at UConn. He is very close to getting his 700th career victory. So also is his good friend and colleague Jimmy Beheim. Well, uh, Vern, you know one thing about Jim Calhoun. Uh, obviously, you know what he did at Northeastern, doing a great job building that program. But let me say this. You talk to Dave Gavin, you talk to Mike Trangese, you talk to George Quinney, you talk to Jim O'Brien. None of those fellas ever felt, and I think Gavin's one of the smartest guys I've known in the history of basketball, ever felt that Connecticut could put themselves in a position to be a national team year in, year out. It has to be the greatest building job in the history of college basketball, in my opinion. Well, that's a heck of a testament to you. 
And if you look at the guys he gets here, they're not the McDonald's All-Americans for the most part. Yeah, I've never put a lot of okay. things in that in the first place. You try to go after basketball players, not titles. Maybe the final shot of the half. It's on the floor. Watch out for the hits. Good effort by both teams. A little bit shaky execution. That's the end of one. 34-31 UConn. Let's go to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, thank you, Vern. Coming up on Singular at the Half, Billy Packer and Seth Davis will join me for another edition of Jump Ball. It comes your way right after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular. Raising the bar. Welcome back to Singular at the Half, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Our score in Hartford, Connecticut. Carolina trailing UConn by a score of 34-31. I am joined by Seth Davis of Sports Illustrated. Nobody really embarrassing themselves out there today. Not, not Ashley Simpson embarrassed, anyway. <laughs> well, that's, that's a pretty high standard yeah. you're setting there, Greg. But North Carolina just not showing up defensively, and their offense is hurting their defense. And I think the Tar Heels really need a quality win on the road. They've lost at Wake Forest and at Duke in their two toughest tests. If they lose here, Greg, I think those of us who've been picking North Carolina to win the championship might have to reevaluate. All right. Meanwhile, a couple of storylines from yesterday's game. Maryland beat Duke in overtime, sweeping the season series with the Blue Devils. What does that do for the Terps when they're looking ahead to the tournament? Well, I think they were already in the NCAA tournament, Greg, but if there's any mystery, it's out the window. They're ranked 22nd in the RPI. A very favorable schedule down the stretch for Maryland. And the best sign for the Terps, the sophomore guard, Mike Jones, 15 points off the bench. That's his third straight double-figure scoring effort after a slow start to the season. And once again, Greg, the Terps are hitting their stride at exactly the right time. All right, Seth, a different kind of story came from out west where Stanford Dan Grunfeld tore an ACL in his right knee during Stanford's victory over California. Grunfeld will miss the remainder of the season. And what does that do to Stanford? Oh, it's just absolutely devastating for Stanford and Trent Johnson's club. Grunfeld was, uh, has been having a great year, third in the Pac-10 in scoring. Stanford had played its way back onto the bubble. And you hate to talk about other teams benefiting from an injury, but you look at Arizona State right there in the Pac-10 and all these bubble teams across the country, Iowa, Iowa State, Marquette, Miami, right on down the line. If Stanford plays its way out of the tournament, somebody else will have a chance to play their way in. All right, Seth, time now to check in on another candidate for this year's Naismith Trophy presented by Singular Wireless. Who is it, Seth? He's the best point guard in the country, Greg. Chris Paul, the sophomore from Wake Forest, leading the ACC in assists. Second in assist to turnover ratio. He is an explosive scorer, but he'd rather win. Yesterday only took four shots in that big route over Florida State. It's his intelligence and feel for the game that makes him the best point guard in the country. All right, keep in mind, you can still play Naismith Trivia for a shot at a million. Text PLAY to 26222 on your wireless phone. You'll get 20 questions for 20 chances to win a trip to the 2005 NCAA Men's Final Four and a shot at a million. Coming up next here on CBS, live final round coverage of the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am. Jim Nance has today's report. Well, Greg, here at Pebble Beach Golf Links, it's cold and damp, but the final round is underway. Yesterday under blue skies, Phil Mickelson continued his recent hot streak. That was a birdie over at the seventh. On his way to 67 and a seven shot lead and Bill Murray yesterday <laughs> made two natural birdies to make the cut. He's in contention in the Pro-Am competition. Mickelson's lead now is eight over Weir, Sutherland, Clark and Owen. Final round coverage coming up shortly here on CBS. All right, thank you, Jim. Tonight on 60 Minutes, the much anticipated interview. Jose Canseco sits down with Mike Wallace to talk about steroids and who used them. You write, John B. McGuire and I talked about steroids all the time. Especially in 97, yes, especially when we were working out, we talked about it, what each does. And so you what shoot you up steroids and growth hormones with Jason John B. as well? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Into the bathroom stalls and shoot each other up. All the time. I mean, we just, it was not a, it wasn't a big deal. It was, it was common ground. You can see Mike Wallace's entire interview with Jose Canseco tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time on 60 Minutes. We'll take a quick time out. When we come back, Seth and Billy Packer go head-to-head -head in jump ball on Singular at the Half.
Welcome back to Singular at the Half, everyone. Joining us now from Hartford, Connecticut, our very own Billy Packer, which means it's time for the latest edition of Jump Ball. The clock is set, and it's time to go. Gentlemen, would Illinois ultimately be better served by losing prior to the NCAA tournament? Billy, you go first. Uh, I don't believe that at all. I covered the last three teams that got to a Final Four undefeated. Indiana obviously was the best team and won. I think in Vegas's case, they were the best team, but their mind was set on other things. I really think that you want to keep your mind set. The object of the NCAA tournament now is survive and advance, and I think Illinois is well-focused. Billy, I totally disagree. There's a reason this has not been done in 29 years. First of all, it's hard enough to win the NCAA tournament those six games without having the added pressure and all the attention that comes along with it. And frankly, I do believe that Illinois will finish the regular season undefeated. I think at that point, the last thing that they'll need is to play three difficult games in the Big Ten tournament in three days. I think they'd be better off going home, resting, and going for the trophy. All right, guys. If you're a champion, we you have, love pressure. All right, Billy. We have seen some incredible comebacks this season by Illinois, Boston College, Kentucky, Syracuse, Pitt. Which do you think is the best at coming back to win when they're down in a game? Well, first of all, we may have to throw in UNLV and Pacific last night, but I'm going to take Pittsburgh's comeback against UConn. Remember, at that point, the Panthers had been playing very poorly. They had lost at home to Bucknell. Their previous game, they had lost to St. John's to go on the road at UConn and come back from 17 down and win. It was very impressive. And remember, they followed that up by also being 17 down against Syracuse and winning. Billy. I think that the toughest comeback this year was the comeback that Illinois made at Wisconsin, stopping their streak against an excellent team, eight down with seven minutes to go and coming away to win. But I do agree with Seth. As far as the two most difficult comebacks, Pittsburgh against Syracuse and Connecticut, uh, in which they came back from 17 down to win by 20, to me would put them in first place in regard to comeback. He agreed with me. I want you to write that I'm down. It might not happen right again. No, it's Thank amazing. You. With college basketball having a more balanced attack these days without the dominant centers around, who makes up the best inside-outside tandem in the game, Billy? We saw them last night, but we saw them in a losing contest. I think J.J. Redick and Sheldon Williams, two guys that are playing almost 35 minutes a game on the average. They are the two guys that uh, so much is dependent upon for Duke to be doing as well as they are. To me, despite the fact that there are so many great inside-outside combinations, I'd put them in first place. There you go, Billy, again, sucking up to Duke. I'm going to go with Hakeem Warwick and Jerry McNamara up at Syracuse, and it's kind of uh, a two-sided compliment, I think, because Syracuse's problem is they're not getting up production outside of of those two guys they only got five points off the bench in the round of Villanova yesterday uh, and those two guys had 61 to 69 points in their loss uh, to Pittsburgh if it's a two-on-two -two contest I'm going with the Q's but they need better production from their five guys all right Seth thank you Billy thank you for joining us we'll let you get back to Appreciate the second it. half and thank you for watching singular at the half second half's coming up right after this CBS Sports presents singular at the half sponsored by singular raising the bar CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, eating good in the neighborhood, Applebee's, and by Zales, the Diamond Store. We welcome you back to the Hartford Civic Center, 16,400 plus on hand, hard ticket in this city. And UConn enjoys a three-point edge as we start the second half with Billy Packer, Vern Lundquist, UConn, and North Carolina. North Carolina has the ball in the low post to Sean May, and he's uh, got his first basket in the second half. Left hand between Villanueva and Boone. Big play. Boone not did not appear catch. ready for it. He was not. You're exactly right, Vern. He was not ready to make the catch. Manuel's been caught in the open court with the ball a lot today. Here's Felton. Penetration. Nice dish wraparound. Smart decision. McCants with a jumper for three. He cannot wow it in the ocean. My oh my. Statistically at halftime, take a look at UNC. 31%. They're hitting 51% for the season. And the blocks, 7 to 1, UConn over North Carolina. Puts them over 200 blocks this year as a team. Kind of amazing. Good chance to lead the college uh, ranks for the fourth year in a row. Here's Villanueva yet to score. Ball on the floor. Felton down there. Hell ball. If so, the possession arrow is going to go north uh, UConn's way. Or is there a foul? 
Bernie, you know, you talked about that North Carolina shooting over 50%. Imagine this. Dean Smith went 19 straight years coaching the North Carolina team, never being below 50% in shooting. Is that a strong stat or not? That's extraordinary. 19 years in a row. And again, Boone is not ready. He gets a foul from behind there on Williams. Great Connecticut. You know, having a little conversation with Marcus Williams now. Maybe about the nature of the uh, of the pass inside. Non-shooting foul. Williams gets it in the hands of Denham Brown off the glass and good. Denham Brown can explode. He's got an excellent vertical leap. Doing a good job in that. Foul the other way, this time on Dolma Wave. Back to McCants for a second on that jump shot. He mm -hmm. has no confidence right now. We're talking about a guy that's been a great outside shooter and has been great against Connecticut from the outside in the past two years. He needs to start putting the ball on the floor and driving and getting some confidence with his scoring. He's posting up down and low and now out of frustration, fighting for position against Denham Brown, who is bigger, stronger, and can handle him in the low post. And he picks up his third. And when things do not go right for Raymond McCants, he's the a body language sometimes tells a story. Absolutely. He could be the difference between this team being able to win six games in the NCAA tournament and not. Williams gets it back after the misplay. Touched by Manuel. Here's Rudy Gay. He's guarded by Manuel. Great defensive job by yes, Manuel. Really moving goes. those feet. Terrific. Here's Felton. He's got McCants. Left side. You, you can see when he releases the ball, he's coming down. He's all at different angles. Doesn't have a square up follow through. He's two for nine in this game. High arch. Wow. Williams has that down to a science, doesn't he? Here's Felton. Rejected by Boone. That's eight blocks. See, Felton gave up the shot so early that Boone could plan himself to be ready for the block. Denham Brown all over McCants. Jumper Felton. Hey, sense frustration for North Carolina now. Trying to get it back to quick shots. Here's Williams. Back to Villanueva. Jumper 18 footer. Felton should come back, slow things down, get May into the game right here. Get back to some half-court offense. There's Jawad Williams. Having a pretty good ball game himself. He's 5 for 11 in 12 points so far. In that first half, Marcus Williams had 12 points, 3 assists, only 1 turnover. Felton, 2 points. So, Williams getting the better. And again, boy, nice penetration there. Put the ball on the floor, and here's McCants. That's the kind of thing Kim lifting. Get the ball to the basket off a dribble. Roy Willems trying to get his confidence back. 38-37 with 16-40 to go. Denham Brown, Marcus Williams, Boone, Villanueva, and Gay. Lazy switch that time by McCants. Put his teammate in trouble. Boom! Aggressive! Took that ball right away from May. May being slow getting down the court right now. They're playing five against four. The dish from Felton and the kiss off the glass for Juwan Williams. Farthest May got down the floor with the top of the key that time. Back to a one-pointer edge, 40-39. Denim Brown. High screen and roll. Still in the waiver. Boy, McCants did not do a good job on that switch again. That time he left Williams all alone. They could have got the ball back to Bill in the waiver. Four on the shot clock. Williams. Oh, what a game. What a game he's having. Beautiful arc on his shots. Belton at the other end. There's Boone. But uh, that wasn't a bad shot either. No. Belton goes left hand. Here comes Williams. A little out of control. But there is a foul. Foul on Manuel. Williams having a sensational game out here. UConn and North Carolina. Time goal. Forty-two, forty-one. Let's take a look, Billy, at uh, the shot chart of McCants. 
Well, I talked about a guy in six games. He could lead him to an NCAA tournament, but he could hurt him. And you can see right there, having a bad day from the outside. Over four, he is four for his last 24 three-point attempts. And is going to rest for a while now. David Noel is back on the floor. Raymond Delton. There's a nice entry pass. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Hilton Armstrong. Oh, I give Jim Calhoun a lot of credit. A great play set up in that timeout situation. High, low, post. Perfect speed. Josh Dune with eight. There's another block. You cannot commit and expect to have that much time inside with these shot blockers. Marcus Williams. Back outside to Armstrong. Well, the nation's number one shot blocking team. Nine now. Their high for the season in a game is 19. And here's where North Carolina's made some runs with Kellogg in the ball game and Williams on the bench. Williams still out there, so they're playing with two point guards. And a hill ball. Melvin Scott wrapped him up. It's going to be North Carolina ball. Tonight on 60 Minutes, with all the talk about Jose Canseco and steroids, there's only one place you can hear him tell the story. 60 Minutes tonight on CBS. Three-point UConn lead, 14.35 to go in this sixth-ever meeting between these two outstanding programs. Scott, Jawai Williams, front rim, taken away by Kellogg. He's got Rudy Gay in the corner. He'll come back outside. And four or five times now, they've sloppily received passes. And there is Felton with a foul by Kellogg, and he's going to the line. You know, and what happened, Vern? Passing the ball to a big man who can't handle it in the open court. It's a turnover that's going to take place for Armstrong, but it wasn't his fault. He never should have received that pass to start off with. There's Kellogg going up with Felton. Tried to elevate for the dunk. Guard against guard. Third foul on Kellogg. My guess is he's going to get a seat on the bench. Denham Brown getting ready to come in. And here's Felton with the line. But we've seen that time and again by Kellogg today. You have to understand who you're passing the ball to. Don't put Armstrong in that kind of a position out front. Kellogg, a little pat of encouragement. And Jim Calhoun and George Blaney and Felton shoots one more. Well, everybody knows that Connecticut lost Gordon and Okafer, but Talik Brown was a guy that just didn't make those kind of mistakes. A great backcourt leader for Connecticut on their run to the national championship. This UConn team, two national titles in the last seven years 99 and, and again Williams lost the ball to Felton nice pass and a strong move by Marvin Williams to the basket now there's the difference taking the ball inside it's got to be quick you can't in effect figure you're going to beat two men to go ahead and deliver it players falling down all over inside Armstrong and Felton both hit the deck here's Felton up goes by Armstrong wow, no foul oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm looking at Roy Williams. I think, are you kidding me? Is a euphemistic. I mean, there's no question that no ball was ever touched there. Had to be a foul. I'm sure that's what Roy Williams said. Are you kidding me? I'm sure that's what he said. Inbounds. Alley oop. Touchbacks. McCants. From the out-of-bounds play. Now, Gay was kind of shocked that that happened. Now, here we go. We're back with a bad backcourt situation for Connecticut. With Williams out, he can't sit down more than 20 seconds. He's going back in. Here we see that lob right over the top. Gay wasn't prepared for the inbounds pass. But Kellogg right now is having all kinds of problems with this North Carolina team. Camps again. Up and under. How about that? Gay gets caught twice on inbound situations. Two in a row for North Carolina. And Carolina leads by four. A 7-0 run. Foul before the catch. Probably a pretty good foul by Marvin Williams because Armstrong had an easy basket. Every once in a while, Williams gets a little lackadaisical with that left hand. He'll throw balls off the dribble that he doesn't have control on him. A game with a team that plays good overplay defense like North Carolina, you got to be a little bit more careful. Perfect position for Boone for the putback. And Josh Boone brings UConn back with him, too. Here's McCants. Sean May has uh, completed his rest. 
That one tipped away by Boone, but uh, North Carolina gets it back. Scott, right side. Look for the entry to McCants. Pretty good defense that time by Kay. Three on two. Numbers. Boone, after Felton slipped. Tied at 48. Felton slows it down. Josh Boone, 10 points, 6 rebounds. Backdoor cut. Led him too much. Well, Felton kind of slowed down a little bit. Here you see where Felton falls. And when he goes down, that allows Boone to be wide open. Scott had no idea there was nobody back there to help. Probably wouldn't make any difference because Boone would be too big for him. Good, solid comeback by Connecticut. Whenever they can keep Williams on the floor, their team does well. When they have to spell him and Kellogg comes in, that's when North Carolina makes those runs. On the floor right now for the Huskies, Williams, Villanueva, Gay, Denham Brown, and Hilton Armstrong. Here's Gay. Too short. Villanueva rebound, also too short. Jackie Manuel. Belton for North Carolina. Jumper. Perfect. Three-pointer. Terrific job by Felton, who's really improved in that area. And here's Manuel, that free safety again. His teammates turn their back on him. And Gay gets it. Puts an elbow into Marvin Williams. No foul called. Gay with the basket. North Carolina players ran away from Manuel. Nobody had their back. Turning to him. Manuel. Felton, there's the screen and roll. The dish to May. Fouled in the basket. Good strong move by May to the basket. Got something brewing here in Hartford. 53 50. Time call. Welcome back to Hartford with the conclusion of today's game. We'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for 25 years. North Carolina leads by three in this sixth meeting ever between these two. They have met each of the last three years. North Carolina won twice down at Chapel Hill. And it was that 1998 game in Greensboro, which North Carolina won and then went on to the Final Four, losing to Utah. But Jim Calhoun said it was the beginning of our run for that 99 national championship. Bellamine had the big game there, 24, and obviously that team came back in 99. Williams with the offensive rebound, and another one now. Here's Felton for three. Wow. Huge! Off the missed free throw and a missed basket. Two offensive boards and a three-point play. He was a 34% three-point shooter coming into this year and now doing the job. Big break for North Carolina. There's a one-touch pass. May gets the miss into the hands of Felton. They'll bring it back outside. He keeps the dribble off. Williams, foul. Largest lead of the game now for North Carolina. Get complete college basketball coverage, and tonight, don't miss Heroes and Goats. In Greg Doyle's Weekend in Review, only on CBSSportsLine.com. One of the oddities about this series for North Carolina with those four victories, each of the four accomplished with a different coach. Dean Smith, Bill Guthrie, Matt Doherty, and Roy Williams. Oh, good job by Armstrong. Altered that shot. Not a block, but May had to alter the shot thinking it would be a block. Hey, Armstrong's becoming a valuable player for this team. You know, I'm, at the beginning of the year, I remember reading an article in which Jim Calhoun said, I think he's got a great upside. That uh, no one talks about him when you talk about Boone and Villanueva. And he traveled on that one. Too much praise too early. Hilton Armstrong. And he's a 6'11", 235-pound old junior. Out of Peak School, New York. That is the 18th UConn turnover, by the way. This North Carolina team, with their up-tempo game, forces teams into an average of 20 turnovers per contest. 
give both coaches credit in that first half. They sat their starters down quite a bit to have them rested for this, this second half run. There's McCants going into no man's land again. Bad place to go. And the shot altered, if not blocked. Boone wants it. Williams didn't see him. I don't know why. McCants knows he's not hitting his jumper. There he fails to get out. Lazy defense. Doesn't cost him. And he gets the long rebound because he did not get back. What hustle by Dave. 9.45 to go. Six-point game. Dave, jumper. And over the back, the foul is called on Marvin Williams. Yes, that's his second. Interesting, Connecticut has not gotten to the line much. In North Carolina, has two big losses to Wake Forest and then to Duke. Those two teams shot 53 of 54 fouls against North Carolina. 53 of 54. Wake Forest setting a record 32 out of 32, an ACC record. Connecticut has not gotten to the line that much. Nice the glass. No point blank. Boom. Puts it back. Connecticut's front line doing the job. Four-point game, nine and a half to play. Here's Felton. Beautiful. But he missed it. Oh, a great steal. Boone, spin, Felton, Boone there. Felton with the basket. Tremendous job by Felton. Major turnover there for Connecticut. Nearly another one. Here's Gay. Jim Calhoun says, slow it down. 18 North Carolina points. Beauty! Okay, when North Carolina is switching on that pick and roll, they are lazy in getting back to their man. We have seen McCants do it, and that time Williams did it. Good job by Marcus Williams to recognize that. First points of the game for Charlie Villanueva. Jawad Williams. Nice defensive job by Villanueva. High pick and roll, McCants gets it back. Williams, yes, beautifully conceived. Both teams are doing a nice job with pick and roll. North Carolina by seven. Jawad Williams has 17, so he's broken out of his slump. Villanueva, nope. Boy, is Josh Boone doing a job on the offensive glass? Marcus Williams, pull up jumper, too high. Again, offensively, yes. A great ball. Here's a Yukon pass. Williams finds Villanueva. And there was that pick and roll where Williams just fell asleep. You can see him lackadaisically going back on defense, not recognizing what will happen. Gay goes to the line. I thought that was a pretty good block from behind. Here's Gay at the line. Yukon. 8 of 12 from the free throw line today. And one more. Remember what Jim Calhoun told us yesterday you know, about free throws? His team, UConn, is shooting 71% from the line. And where does that rank them in college basketball? What's it? 119. 19, yeah, 119. Just amazing. 71% as a team is a decent average. On two misses. How about North Carolina? They're shooting over 70%, but so are their opponents. Bad right. defense from the foul. <laughs> McCants. Oh, that was huge. Circles it home. That was huge in two ways. Not only points on the board, but confidence for a player who has not been hitting from the outside. Villanueva in close. McCants, however, got one to rattle home. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Chevy and American Revolution, supercharged for 2005. Sprint, the Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible Plan means the end of ugly overages. And by Allstate, are you in good hands? Tonight on CBS, it's music's biggest night. The Grammy Awards are live with superstar performances you can't see anywhere else. Don't miss the surprises. Queen Latifah hosts the Grammy Awards live tonight at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Vern, how about that combination? You got Pebble Beach, right. golfers who also sing. Yes. Okay, I'm going with Kenny G. Ooh, okay. Well, he doesn't sing, but he plays, he, he, he right. plays musician. musician. He's a musician. 
I, now, you got to figure Bing Crosby wasn't bad, but I don't think they had Grammys when he was back there. He was a golfer that could sing. Huh? Grammys, Gra Grammys back then were your parents' parents. I guess so. Kenny G, though, he'd probably be the man that's the best combination golfer. Ooh, I'll give Musician. you another one. Glenn Campbell. Vince Gill. Vince Gill, not bad. Vince Gill can really play and play. Blocks Connecticut 12 to 1, but the turnovers, Billy, 19 for UConn in this game and only 10 for North Carolina. And North Carolina asserting command. They're playing much better in their second half. North Carolina leads by 10. They've improved their field goal percentage by 12 percentage points in this half. Jawad Williams, 7 of 15, Billy, for 17 points. Well, he was in a slump, as we pointed out at the top of the show, but has come back, hitting from the outside, doing a nice job. There's a low post-up move inside. He's come up very big for North Carolina today. And in the meantime, Rashad McCants has to sit now. He picked up his fourth foul prior to our going to the commercial break. Scott comes into the ball game to take the place. Very experienced player. It's been kind of shoved to the side a little bit, and I don't mean that as a, a, a major negative, but in minutes played, he had been a starter for North Carolina in the past. He's had a lot of experience. Where's number one? He's on the right side. Here's Felton. Melvin Scott, 27 starts a year ago. Here's Jackie Manuel playing with stomach problems. Back into the hands of Melvin Scott. Now Marvin Williams puts it on the floor. There's a rejection. Gay, and he kept it in play. We're going to have any times today the big guy's going to have to learn you can't beat your man and expect to be open inside. Connecticut's got the shot blockers. It's not going to happen. For Kansas, of Felton, and that's 20 turnovers for UConn. I'm strong, the man back. Williams, too strong. Marvin Williams got fouled and made it anyway. 11-point lead. And Boone again calling for it. A little frustrated that he did not get it. Here's Denim Brown. Nice touch. Denim Brown a lot stronger than most people that guard him. Plus, he's got tremendous elevation. Back outside to Daniel. Melvin Scott, left wing. Entry pass. There's Gay again. There's Jim Lock again. Beautiful. Jumper Good. from the corner. Boom! Here's Williams. Now Denim Brown running really hard. Marcus Williams in the lane. No foul. Putback is good. Denim Brown. Nice comeback. The year of the comebacks to the Big East. Connecticut's been involved in a few of them themselves. Yes, they had a 17-point lead against Pittsburgh and lost. Brown really stepping up defensively right now, causing some problems for Scott. Shot clock at 10. Pick and roll coming. Belton, that one is uh, a foul. Wow, I didn't think that was a foul. I'm, I'm misjudging a lot of plays today. Don't miss a minute of March Madness access live video to all of the games outside your viewing area, plus live tournament press conferences, game highlights, and more. Get March Madness on Demand only at NCAAsports.com or CSTV.com. Fern, we've seen so many guys drive to the basket today, get hit with the body, and no foul called. There was a little touch reach in, and the foul was called. Belton, who has a double-double, he's got 13 points and 10 assists. He misses the first free throw. How about this, Billy? 15 blocked shots by UConn. And that's not their record because they had 19 against St. John's this year. And this is against North Carolina. North Carolina impressive. players have made the mistake of beating their man from 15 feet and then thinking they're going to go all the way to the hoop. And they pick up that second Connecticut big man for the block. Antonio Kellogg is back on the floor. He walks. He walked twice. Referees are looking right at it. I, I think the referees are getting lazy. Gay inside, boom. Nice is it. Nice. Six point game. Five ten to go. Boom with a double double. 16 points and 10 rebounds. Here's May. Big first half. 
Jawan Williams in and out, boom with 11 rebounds. He didn't have that ball securely in his hands on the catch before the shot. Big possession for UConn. Alley oop. Oh, Running great. away there. Can't hang on. Well, that'd have been a great catch if he'd have made that play. That's not a really good angle, Vern, unless you have a guy that's absolutely wide open against a smaller opponent. When you throw it straight ahead like that, it's a very difficult pass to make. 21 UConn turnovers. Four North Carolina four. with only 10. 4.45. When is McCants coming back in his game? Not yet. He's got four fouls. Scott in and out. I think he needs to get off that bench soon. Here's Kellogg. Perimeter building away, but now he gets inside. Boom, double team. Arrow, Connecticut. Josh Boone, 15 blocks for UConn in this game. There it is again. Get down inside. You do not have time against a shot blocking team to try. Play. There was a case with Williams going, beating his man, running right into the shot block. Yet, despite that, because they have. Uh, not turned the ball over much. UConn, or rather North Carolina, leads by six. McCants is back in the ball game. 421 to go. Four fouls on him. Here's Felton out on Williams. And McCants guards Antonio Keller. Up and under. Uh, not so sure about that. Not a good play. Felton, great speed. Where are you going? Another big out of the same situation. Numbers. Got it. Here's May at the other end. Villanova's back defensively. And boy, they know it this time. I can't believe North Carolina has not learned their lesson. Four years in a row, Connecticut has led the nation in shot blocks. What kind of scouting report do you need? Noel. Foul called on UConn. Jim Calhoun, livid. Another UConn block. Take you back 13 months ago, the Dean Dome in Chapel Hill, UConn in North Carolina. Rashad McCants proved to be clutch, hitting the game time three-point shot and also the game-winning three-point shot. Six seconds to go, North Carolina defeated UConn 86-83 it was a court stormer we got uh, almost suffocated well McCants made the last 10 points for North Carolina in that game a tremendous job on his part going down to the wire and he's had 27 twice against this uh, Connecticut club in his career he's on the floor with four fouls right now Back to the cut. There it is. Marcus Williams got caught Back to a six-point game. Here's Boone, double-double today. Antonio Kellogg on the floor. Day comes out, receives the pass. Jumper. Ooh, didn't get the roll. Bill in the way, though. Watch his backdoor cut, Billy. Well, this is a patented North Carolina move. Williams goes out. Good backdoor move that time by McCants. Goes right by him. And there you see no help from the weak side. You go deliver the basketball right away. Where North Carolina's gotten in trouble this, in this game is beating their man and not realizing they have more to go before they make the shot. And that's why they're getting so many shots blocked. Villanueva misses the first of the one and one. And there is uh, Marvin Williams. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Well, we've talked about it so much. It, uh, can't be anything but blocks. UConn 16, North Carolina 1. Get complete game stats at cbssportsline.com. Now, it's not the kind of thing that a school would put in its weekly release. Number of shots had blocked. So, I don't know what the record is for North Carolina, but I would think 16 against the Tar Heels. I know it's a darn good average. Absolutely. And the other thing about it, Bert, it's not just one guy. This entire front line getting piece of the balls on on the inside. They have five guys that I, I guess that have had a block. Here's a great free throw shoot of the freshman, and of course, of course, 85 percent underneath. The tip got it. The 
Zach Williams missed the free throw, battled back to get a good strong rebound. Under three to go. And it's up to an eight-point game. Williams doing a nice job denying going away to the ball on the outside. North Carolina has lost three this year. The opener to Santa Clara. Most recently to Duke. Also to Wake Forest. Here's Marcus Williams. Trying to use the glass. Got the ball. Oh, wow. And this time it's Sean May. His 12th rebound. Got a chance now. Marcus Williams got hit in the face. In the nose on that particular play. I think he's going to be all right, but he's holding that nose. Got to play through it. Yes, yeah. he did. Near the two-minute mark. Felton, Emmanuel, and he's got a man on him now that he can take and get. And does. Kicks it right side. Top of the key, passing the shot because Boone is out defender. Well, I don't know if this is a good move right here. Three on the shot clock. Two Double more. team. Jumper. Yes! Oh, how about that? Wow, the freshman. The young man has got a total game. It's just going to be a matter of time. He steps out, hit that jump shot. I thought McCants was going to go ahead and try to take his man one-on-one. -on -one. Marvin Williams. Back in Hartford, where the freshman from Bremerton, Washington, hit the big jumper to uh, increase the lead to 10. Bill Mickelson began the day with a seven-stroke lead. Final round of the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am. He's 21 under right now. Mike Weir has moved into second. Kevin Sutherland is third. Ten-point game, North Carolina trailing by three and a half. And Marvin Gay Williams, Jr. made the big jumper, sitting by the dock of the bay. And a whistle and a foul. I don't think it's a foul. No. I think the, what is he talking about? Shot clock, maybe. Putting 35 on there. Now we're set to go. 140 to go. Get it in the hands of Kellogg. He's guarded by Tilton. And the reason Kellogg's on the get on the floor and this really hurts Jim Calhoun because Williams is being attended to by the doctor. And a yeah. turnover by the freshman guard. He's had problems all day today. 22 turnovers. Recall that Wednesday night, this North Carolina team turned it over 23 times in a one-point loss. Duke. Friend, we talked about both of these outstanding coaches, Jim Calhoun and Roy Williams. Roy Williams has done something that nobody in college basketball who's active right now has done. He's won at least one game, 15 straight NCAA tournaments, which is uh, the only guy in the country that's not only been in the tournament, but has won games 15 straight years. Ten years an assistant to Dean Smith at his alma mater in North Carolina, 15 years at Kansas. Turned the job down once. Well, that doesn't break the North Carolina record because Dean Smith <laughs> had 16 years in a row where he got to the Sweet 16. That's that, that's an unbelievable that accomplishment really in terms of consistency of a program. And a Big East score BC knocked him out of that run in 1994. 1.20 to go. Here's Marcus Williams back on the floor. Got to put some shots up quickly. Devin Brown, quick hands again. Rudy Gay caught underneath. And a foul is called on North Carolina. I think it's going to be Marvin Williams on the reach in. And that's his fourth. But you got to be thinking now, down 12, you got to be, if you're Brown, you need to be thinking about shooting an outside, some outside threes. 1-11 to go. Final round of the AT&T Pebble Beach Classic coming up. Rudy Gay at the line, two of four from the free throw line. Substitution, Jack Emanuel. Nice job considering his sickness and illness today. Solid defense as usual. Well, it would appear North Carolina is going to win its 20th for the first time in a couple of years. That's three years. Yes. Yeah, that's rather amazing, isn't it? First time in this will be the fourth season. They had, of course, that 8 and 20 year that something way beyond anything you'd ever expect from a North Carolina team. Nice pass and good decision by Noel to pull it out. 19-11 a year ago for North Carolina and then a second round NCAA loss to Texas. 
And here's Belton as the clock shows 45 seconds to go. North Carolina is going to go 20 and 3, their final intersectional game of the year, back to ACC play. Billy, you and Jim Nance will see them final regular season Ooh, week. Boone, Boone is going to cramp. Down. He's got a cramp. Yep. The official is just going to let him sit down there, and there's a good move by Denim Brown, and now Boone will be taken off the floor. He's got a severe cramp. We see that more and more of late. And uh, showing some real toughness here. He goes up, comes down, and there's the cramp sets in, and he goes right to the floor. Josh Boone, four blocks to complement 16 points and 11 rebounds. Time call. Play is underway at Pebble Beach, and we'll join Jim Nance in the game for the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am. Full coverage next as Phil Mickelson tries to go back-to-back -back victory last week, and he's got a big lead today. He is not on the bubble, Burns, no. as they say. But no. how about his alma mater? Is it Arizona State, Arizona right? Arizona State, right. They are on the bubble. They are. As are a couple of other teams out there in that Pac-10. Who else do you see out there? Arizona and Washington are not. UCLA, a bubble team yet? Wow. they got to win some more. Yeah, right? I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know who that will be. They've got a postseason conference tournament. Maybe somebody will make a run there. Maybe somebody has to. Time goal. Twenty-eight point eight on the clock. Seventy-five sixty-eight. Mentioned the final regular season game will be the rematch with Duke that will be televised on CBS a little later on. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game: Raymond Felton from North Carolina, Josh Boone from Connecticut. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. 75-68, Tar Heels, back in a moment. Back in Hartford, where North Carolina leads UConn, 75-68. They go back home, back to the back home games, Virginia and Clemson. Then uh, at North Carolina State in Maryland, there's a turnover. And Kellogg. Tosses it up from three, not there. Rebound, Sean May. And uh, he's going to be fouled. He had McCants all alone at the other end. Connecticut wisely, though, putting five guys to the ball. Couldn't get the ball to McCants. Executive producer of CBS Sports is Tony Petiti. The coordinating producer of NCAA basketball on CBS, Bob Dikas. Today's game directed by Bob Fishman. At the half, produced by Ben DeVito and directed by Kathy Barreto. Coordinating producer of CBS Sports, Harold Bryant. The associate directors of today's game, Steve Karasik and Jonathan Siegel. Broadcast associates, Josh Hall and Steve Murphy. Our technical manager, Rick Godwin. Technical director, Scott Sickler. Audio supervisor is Kevin Little and statistician, Charles Santa Monica Gardner. The pride of Baltimore. Oh, Armstrong. Armstrong. May didn't block out. Armstrong took advantage. Five-point game. And a foul call with 3.2 seconds. You see the highlights of that UNLV comeback? Oh, unbelievable, time? wasn't yeah. it? You're seeing it all over the country. Incredible enthusiasm in so many different arenas. And, and you talk about enthusiasm. This is what Connecticut has to face the rest of the way and where they're going to find some enthusiasm they have to play. It's at Providence, at Rutgers, at Pitt, Notre Dame, Georgetown, and Syracuse. Then the Big East tournament, which, you know, what, right. what what game there is a night off, you know? So an incredible run that they have. North Carolina finds themselves in real good shape, I think, schedule-wise, because they have basically, out of their last six games, four at home, including that Duke game you mentioned. They have to go to, to NC State and then to Maryland, which uh, did a great job last night against Duke. You saw what happens to Duke when they get in foul trouble. Last shot, no good by Denham Brown, Roy Williams, and the Tar Heels to beat Jim Calhoun and the Huskies by seven. Back in a moment. AT&T Pebble Beach final round with Phil Mickelson holding a commanding lead. That's next on CBS. Full coverage with our golf game out of one of the most beautiful spots uh, in the country. 
Our final here, 77 to 70. North Carolina wins it. For Billy Packer, I'm Vern Lundquist saying goodbye from Hartford. This is CBS, home of the NCAA championship.